So in this video, I thought I'd do something a little different. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about Mathematica's uh, quantity, uh, their quantity feature, and specifically why I love it so much and why it's the only thing I use to deal with units. So to deal with units, uh, because previously, in this video, I'm going to be talking about something I absolutely love, uh, and that's Mathematica's uh, quantity feature. So their quantity, uh, it used to be a package, now it's just integrated into the main software. And why, why am I talking about this? Well, uh, it's an absolutely beautiful way to deal with units. Uh, and with a couple of slight modifications, it's an engineer's dream. So it's an engineer's uh, dream. And uh, let's, just to, to show you why, let's do a couple of examples. So let's say that you've got, uh, let's say you're an optical engineer, uh, and let's say that you want to calculate, maybe you've got a camera that you're measuring or a camera pixel, and you're sending a bunch of photons to that pixel. Let's say that the photon energy, uh, so the energy of your photons is 1.3 electron volts, and you detect a number of photons uh, per microsecond in that pixel of, let's say, a million or 10 to the six. And you know this pixel's dimensions, you know this is a 10 micron uh, by 10 micron pixel. And you'd like to calculate the optical intensity. So uh, let's say that we want to calculate it in milliwatts per square centimeter, which is a standard uh, unit of intensity. We know that the intensity of a beam of light, or if you don't just uh, bear with me, is just the power of that beam divided by the area that that beam is spread over. And the power is just the number of photons uh, per second multiplied by the energy of that photon. So we have a, an equation that gives us the intensity. The problem is the units are all kinds of messed up. Like we've got this photon energy in EV, uh, we've got this in per microseconds, we've got this in per micrometer, and we want it in milliwatts per square centimeter, and we've got this in EV. Um, so Mathematica is a great way of uh, doing this easily and quickly with absolutely no errors. Uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So let me just drag over, uh, let me just drag over my physical constants uh, notebook. Uh, and so this is the notebook that I use or the, the notebook that I use prior to doing any sort of units. And so you'll see that I've got a bunch of physical constants up here defined using quantities. Uh, I've also got a bunch of units, so units for length, power, energy, uh, current, voltage, ohms. I'm an electrical engineer, so you can see I deal with a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of electrical quantities. And so we said that the uh, the energy of our photons was 1.3 electron volts, so 1.3 eV. Uh, we said that the area of our pixel was 10 uh, microns by 10 microns. Uh, what else did we say? We said that the, uh, let me let me go back to back to this guy real quick. Um, oh yeah, we said that the number of photons per microsecond was 10 to the six. So the, uh, so the number of photons uh, per microsecond is 10 to the six per microsecond. Okay, and now all we want is the intensity. So let's say that the intensity is just equal to, uh, what do we say? This was the number of photons per second times the energy of our photon divided by the area of our pixel. And we said that we want this in, what do we want? So we're gonna convert the units using uh, the unit convert function. We're going to convert the units from whatever they are right now. I don't really care. They're sort of a mess, uh, but we want these in milliwatts per square centimeter. Done. 208 milliwatts per square centimeter. Or let's say maybe you want to calculate some interesting physical quantity like the, the Bohr radius, for example. So if you go on Wikipedia, we can find an equation for the Bohr radius in terms of a bunch of physical constants. So epsilon naught h bar uh, the mass of electron and the electronic charge, and uh, eight, these uh, these units are all ungodly complicated. So epsilon naught 
uh, is in farads per meter, h bar is in energy per time, q is in coulombs, mass is in kilograms, but doesn't matter. Mathematica really doesn't care. We can just convert this quantity. And I've defined all these above. So I've actually defined h bar, for example, in terms of electron volt seconds. Uh, I've, defer I've defined the, uh, let's see, how have I defined the electron mass? I think it's in kilograms. Oh no, it's in, uh, it's in Mathematica's internal representation. Um, and I think the electric charge is also, yeah, uh, Mathematica's internal representation. But let's say that I want the Bohr radius in picometers because I'm an engineer. Done. About 53 picometers. Or maybe I want to convert it into, uh, maybe I just, maybe I want that in angstroms because I'm a sadist. Uh, well, I, uh, I refuse to use angstroms, so I just defined angstrom in, angstroms in terms of nanometers. Uh, but the beauty is that Mathematica understands um, units, so it understands nanometers, for example, as its own independent quantity, not as just 10 to the minus 9 meters. And so you can get answers in terms of your favorite units. Or maybe you're an electrical engineer uh, like myself, and you want to know, for example, uh, the impedance of a capacitor at, I don't know, let's say 10 gigahertz. Maybe you're just curious. Uh, and let's say it's a 10, it's a 10 picofarad capacitor. Uh, and you want this uh, because you're an engineer. You just want this in ohms. So you want to convert the units into ohms. And it gives you an answer of 5 over pi, or if we want that in decimals, uh, about 1.59 ohms. So that's cool. Uh, or maybe maybe we want the capacitor's impedance at 10 terahertz. Then it's going to be, uh, let's say I want it in milliohms, 1.59 milliohms. That's, uh, that's what you'd expect. Or maybe you've got an electric field. So maybe you've got an electric field and you know that its value is, I don't know, 100 volts per meter, for example. Or no, let's say, let's say it's something bigger, 10 to the 7 volts per meter. And maybe you want this in, uh, so let's say, oops, uh, so maybe you want to convert this into, I don't know, uh, kilovolts per nanometer. Done. It's, uh, this is an extremely easy way to quickly get, uh, quickly convert units without ever making any errors, which, uh, as much as I love converting units in my head, uh, I am prone to making mistakes quite often. And so these are just a few examples of the, the many things you can do uh, using Mathematica's quantity feature. And I'll just leave the leave the screen up here for a little while so uh, you can see how exactly I defined all of these things. So I actually define my units uh, as variables, and then Mathematica just handles that beautifully and allows very natural entry and conversion of units. And so I'm going to post this uh, post this notebook. So uh, so that you guys can can see it as well as uh, any updates that I make to it. And I would be remiss not to mention Mathematica's unit simplify function. So let's say that we want the charge on a capacitor of one picofarad uh, with two volts. Um, it initially gives the, us the answer in picofarad volts. Uh, we know that it's going to be in coulombs, but we'd like Mathematica to simplify this for us. And it gives you the answer in coulombs, as you'd expect. So Unit Simplify does a pretty good job all by itself of trying to reduce the complexity of the units that you've given it. And then maybe we want that as a numerical answer. So it looks like it's going to be two picocoulombs. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel below. Uh, this is the first sort of screencasting type video I've, I, I've done. So any feedback on it would be nice, uh, and if you like like these sorts of videos, maybe I can do them more often. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.